we greet everyone in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Smith of the Greater Atlanta Healing Temple, located at 1332 Holcomb Avenue in East Point, Georgia. We are an apostolic church teaching and preaching the truth of God. Amen. Welcome to our Sunday School session for today. And we thank each of you for joining us, and we trust that you will be edified and that God will get all of the glory. At this time, let us pray. God, we thank you for another opportunity to share in your word with your people. We ask your blessings. We ask your direction. Open our understanding that we may rightly and truthfully divide your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Once again, welcome to Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Sunday School Session with Pastor Smith. We thank God for you. And our lesson for today is the blessing of godliness. Blessing of godliness. Our walk with God. And once we have been um, introduced and adopted into the body of Christ, we receive multitude of blessings. And today we're talking about the blessing of godliness. Our lesson comes from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. And it reads as follows. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly love, and to brotherly love charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Shall never, yes, fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly, unto the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Praise God. So again, our lesson text come from the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. And once again, our speaker is the Apostle Paul. I mean, Apostle Peter. I'm, I'm sorry, I stand correct. The Apostle, this is Peter speaking today. We've been talking about Paul, and now Peter is addressing the church today. And for those who are watching us and looking at us on Facebook, our poster is entitled, A Divine Nature. We're talking about not our natural nature, 
but a divine nature that comes with knowing and obeying God. And our lesson this is the blessing of godliness. If there is ever a time that we need to see people exhibiting godliness, it is now. God has left us here for such a time as this in which we are living, and his grace is sufficient. We have no excuse. Once we have been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost, he has equipped us with everything we need to live a godly life in this present world. So Peter is reminding the saints, and he said, according as his divine power, Jesus has that divine power. He has power over all things, and it did not come from man, but it came from his Father, God gave him that power. He has power over all things now. And according to his power that he has given unto us everything we need that pertains to life and godliness. We have no excuse, my brother or sister, that we cannot live holy and be Christian examples now because God has equipped us and given you and I everything we need in order to live a holy life, a godly life in this present world. And he says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. God has promised us, and these are just no little light promises. We have received the promise of God we are the children of God, and he has promised us to give us the kingdom. He has promised us eternal life. That is about as great a promise as you can receive. Amen. So this is exceeding great, and it is precious. We go through, we struggle, we have our challenges, we have tests, trials, and tribulation. But when we remember the promises that God has given us, because God is a God that can not lie. If he has promised us, it will come to pass. So my friend, hold on and keep the faith. So he said he has given us all that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So the more we come to know Jesus, the more we come to know about God, to learn about God, his ways, his promises, his power, and uh, be endowed with his spirit, then we can make it, we can live a life of godliness because God has called us to glory and to virtue. Amen. He says, uh, we are having that we might escape, uh, be partakers of, here we have those words again, divine nature. The nature of man, our natural nature, is to lie, to steal, to want to get away with doing wrong. That's the sin nature. That's the man nature, the human nature. But once we repent and are baptized and filled with the Spirit of God, we are given a new nature. We are given the divine nature. The word divine means come from God. It is a higher calling than the natural plane. So we have been made partakers of a divine nature, which means now we have the power, we have a different mindset, a different spirit, so that we can be more like Jesus and less like the world. And look what he says. With this divine nature that has been given us, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. This world we live in now is so evil, so corrupted, so uh, immoral. Uh, lust is just rampant. Uh, people are stealing because they're lusting after what don't belong to them. People are committing immoral 
ask because they are being led by the passion of lust and not the spirit of God. All of this killing, all of this stealing, all of this wickedness that you see and hear about is as a result of the lust of the sin nature of humans and not the divine nature of God. He says, now we have escaped all of this corruption that is in the world through lust. And then he goes on and began to explain. He said, verse 5, he said, besides this now, knowing that we have a divine nature, nor, and that should be consolation, that should be comfort, that should be a joy, that should give us confidence to know that we have a divine nature that is being led and being fed by God himself. And we are being led by the spirit of a holy God. And he says, beside this, given all diligence. In other words, don't take living down here from day to day. Don't take it lightly. But he said, give all diligence. In other words, pay special attention. Put priority on living godly. No matter, we are surrounded by wicked people. We are surrounded by men and women, boys and girls who are doing wicked deeds every day. But we have to make it our business as the people of God because we have a divine nature. We are different from the world. We have to give all diligence and give all our best effort to let the godliness show in us. So he said, now giving all diligence add to our faith. First of all, he be, Peter begins with faith. Why does he begin with faith? Because in order for us to start following Jesus, it took faith. We had to believe in him. And we had to believe what he was saying in order to drop our sin nature and start following. So that was a start. Faith is believing and trusted in the crucified Christ. That's where we started. We did not come to Jesus until we heard the report about him being crucified that we might be free from sin and live holy and spend eternity with him. So, first of all, we have to have faith enough to believe that. And when we had faith enough that caused us to believe that, it caused a change in our attitude, a change in our lifestyle. So that started it off faith. Now, he said, don't just stop at faith. He says, now, add to faith virtue. What is virtue? Virtue is good or moral excellence. Every day, we are bombarded with men committing sin, uh, rapes, murders, thefts, carjacking, all of these things that we, that's not of the divine nature of God. But we should be, we are called as Christians, not just in words, but I mean active Christians, because we have a divine nature. That's why we don't go out robbing people. That's why we don't go out stealing. That's why we don't go out doing all of these ungodly things that you read about in the news because we have a different nature because we have been called to glory and called to be godly like Christ. So virtue is having good or moral excellence. In our lifestyle, we say, I want to be better than the people in the world, the things they are doing. I don't want to be cursing all the time. I don't want to walk around using profanity. I don't want to walk around hating people. I don't want to walk around uh, killing people or stealing from people or robbing. That's not moral excellence. That's not godly at all. So he said, add to the faith. We started out having faith and believing in Jesus. So he said, when we start out, don't stop there, but add virtue. Everything that is good or moral. That's the standard that we, the people of God, the true Christian, is striving to attain. So he said, now we've started with faith. We've had virtue. He says, now 
add to your faith virtue. And once we get virtue, God's will is for us to have knowledge. We need to know, first of all, about God. We need to know who he is, what he likes, and what he does not like. Uh, how his characteristics, what he expects out of us. So, and we learn that through the word of God. We come to know what God is like, who he is, why he is, and what he can do for us through his word. A lot of people have gotten so busy, so caught up in today's society that they don't have time to study the word of God. That leads to all kinds of sinful, ungodly activity, lifestyle. But when we look into the word of God, it shows us what God likes and what God hates. And it's our roadmap for how God expects us. That comes through the knowledge of God through his word. So knowledge, scripture, what we read in the Bible, in the word of God, as well as God has given us the ability to have practical wisdom. Wisdom. Using this knowledge to live in our world day by day. Not just on Sunday when we go to church, but God in his word has given us the knowledge that we need, the wisdom, how to live godly every day. So he said, now faith, virtue, and knowledge. And he said, don't even stop there. Remember, we are building up a lifestyle of godliness. We are striving every day to be more and more like God. So he said, now when we got to knowledge, another thing we need is temperance. The, uh, being intemperate is one of the things uh, that is characteristic of the world. They always overdo. Uh, but temperance is self-control, not control by passion. That was get the human family in trouble. Their passion. Oh, I, I see that. I got to have it. People, I heard somebody talking about, we often use the phrase trying to keep up with the Joneses. Well, you got to know where you stand, what you can afford, what you cannot afford. Being able to have self-control. When uh, we are upset, having self-control. The Bible did not say we could not be angry. But knowledge of God's word tells us how to handle that. It says be angry and sin not. You can be angry, but don't. Have hate in your heart against the person. Don't curse person back out because they call you a name. So being angry and sinning not. Self-control. People talk about you. People mistreat you. Are you going to turn around as a child of God and turn back and act just like they are acting? Then we would be no better. But we have to learn how to control our desires, how to control our bodies, keep our bodies under subjection. That way we won't have to be desiring somebody else's wife or husband. We won't have to be desiring what somebody else has. Amen. So which leads to covetousness, wanting something that belongs to somebody else. That's sin. That's not godly. So temperance, Self-control, self-constraint, not letting our passions control us, but we control the passion. So we are continually, steadily building up godly characteristics. Now, he said, now when you get temperance, when you got all this, he said, don't stop there, but add to temperance patience. A lot of people get in trouble because we don't have patience. The people of God, yes, included. Many times, patience, not being patient, shows fear and lack of trust in God. God will not lie. If he said he will supply all our need according to his riches and glory, he meant just that. Many times, 
We look at other people. They seem to be getting everything like just like this. But sometimes God wants his children to learn how to wait on him. And being patient is one of the virtues or characteristics of the divine nature of being God. So patience is endurance of persevering. Many times God is waiting on us to get our act together. We're not waiting on God. But exercising our faith, we will keep walking with God no matter how dark the day seems. No matter what how many people have been sick, have been praying and praying, and look like to them God is not hearing. But God has not promised us he's going to heal us instantly every time we are sick. He did not say every time we need some money and we call him, we're going to get it as soon as we pray. But patience, one scripture said, with patience, possess ye your soul. So stop being in a hurry trying to get ahead of God and let's learn patience and wait on the Lord. Then he said, now when you've got that, still don't give up. And make sure all of this is centered around godliness. What is godliness? Godliness is living a life that is like God. When Jesus walked around, was he walking around calling people out their name because they didn't like him? No. Uh, his enemies, he prayed for them. They mistreated him. And he had all power. He could have had them wiped out in a second, but because he had love instead of hate, he was exhibiting godliness, living like a life that is like God. We used to wear wristbands a few years ago that say, what would Jesus do? And it's still, we need to ask ourselves now, we get in a situation, what would Jesus do in a situation like this? I am trying to be godly. I'm trying to show my divine nature. So add God. He said, now, don't stop there. I want you to also add brotherly kindness. Loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. God expects for you and I, as part of the divine nature, to show our love, our compassion for our fellow man, especially our brothers and sisters. And when we say brothers and sisters, especially those of the household of faith, uh, in other words, especially to fellow Christians, whether they here in America, in China, uh, rich or poor, black or white, they are our brothers and sisters, and a brother or sister in need is a brother or sister indeed. Brotherly kindness. And then he said, now after we have gotten all of these things, also add to brotherly kindness, he said, add charity. Charity. Charity is love for our fellow humans, especially the needy. The Bible says the poor you have with you always. In, the, in other words, there are going to always be homeless. There is going to always be people who are poor, who need help. We are, as the children of God, that divine nature, just like Jesus came down to earth to help us, when we were in sin and lost, we are to show charity, show our love, not talk it, but show our love for the less fortunate, the underprivileged. Amen. Give to charities. Support charity. Support those who are in need. Amen. We like to give to Hosea Feed the Hungry, just one of many organizations. But Helping somebody as we make can reach everybody. We don't know everybody that's in need. But if our heart is full of charity, we have a mind to help somebody somewhere that's in need. Because we were in need at one time in one way or another. And Jesus came all the way from glory, his comfortable home, to help us. Amen. And because he showed love and showed his godliness, amen, and his knowledge of what the Father expected. He 
brought us into the fold. And today we are children of the king because of his love. He adopted us into the royal family. So Peter was telling them and said, now look, he said, now if these things, look, listen, he said, if these things abide in you and they abound, don't just, God don't want us to just have these, but they should be abounding. That means we should be working every day to make these grow. God don't want us to be this place next year and the same place. God wants us to grow. Let our love grow. Let our brotherly kindness increase. Let our godliness increase. Let our light shine. Let us have more patience. Let us show temperance. And let us increase in the knowledge of God. And let us watch and increase in virtue. Anything that's good and moral. So that we can really represent God. And our faith can increase. He said now, but he that lacketh these things. A lot of church people going to church, but they don't have the, all these things. Peter said, this not me, but Peter said in verse 9, He that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see far off. Now, we don't want to be blind. I'm not talking about spiritually blind. We don't want to be blind as Christians. Thinking we because we go to church on Sunday because we dress up a little, because we put a few dollars in offering, paying our tithe, that we are all right. God expects you and I to grow. As Christians, we should grow every day. And he said, if we lack these things that we've gone through, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity, he said, if we don't have these, then we are blind. And he says, if we are blind, we have forgotten that Jesus purged us. He cleansed us from all our old sins. We don't want to forget from where Jesus has brought us. He said, wherefore, brethren, give diligence ah, to make your calling and your election sure. We have been called out. We have been uh, call out, be, we are the elect. We have been those who God has chosen. Now, we have to hold our place, our position with God. Let's make it sure. Let's just don't take it for granted. Well, now, oh, I've been saved. I'm going to do live like I want. No. Peter said, make your calling and your election sure. How do we make it sure? By doing these things. By living a life that is godly free from sin every day, making sure we don't live like the world, but we live with our divine nature more and more like God. He said, for an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are striving to live eternally with Jesus. And these are the things that we need to work on every day to make sure we are living godly. And he, Peter winds up, he said, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. In other words, I am not going to forget and not do my job by constantly reminding you as the people of God and putting you in remembrance of all these things. Even though we already know them, it is the preacher's job every now and then to keep reminding us that of our divine nature, we are not like the world. We start our faith, we should be virtuous people. People, our neighbors, our, our people, co-workers, they should be able to look at us and see that we live good, moral, Christian, godly lives and that we have knowledge of God, they should know that we have been with Jesus. They should know that we have self-control. We are not going out getting drunk, taking drugs, uh, going with the, um, our friends, our spouses, and all this, because we have self-control, because we are controlled by the Spirit of God, and that we are living a godly life. And yeah, he said, I'm, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, as long as I'm living, I'm going to stir up your memory. 
I'm going to keep reminding you as Christians how we are supposed to live, how God is expecting us to live the godly life. And he said, I'm telling you this, and this was Peter, said, I'm telling you while I'm alive, because I know that soon I'm going to be leaving this earthly life as Jesus has already shown me. Amen. So we need to put on the divine nature so that we can be more and more like God every day, letting our light shine so somebody can see you and us, the God in us, and want to be like us. Amen, amen. So we thank God for you joining us. And guess what? We certainly want you to join us next week because we have a very good lesson. Blessing of spiritual fruit. As the people of God, what kind of fruit are we showing? Blessing of spiritual fruit next week. Our lesson will be found in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 18 all the way through chapter 6 and verse 10. Blessing of spiritual fruit. Once again, God bless you. We thank God for you. Amen. And we invite you to join us in worship at Greater Atlanta Healing Temple, 1332 Holcomb Avenue, East Point, Georgia, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. Amen. Again, this is Pastor Smith praying that God bless you, keep you, and give us his spirit so that we can live a godly life in Jesus' name.